I'm Seth Letterman, the CEO of Tonics Pharmaceuticals. Tonics is a specialty pharmaceuticals company. So we're developing prescription drugs, mostly to treat pain syndromes. Our products are non-addictive, and that's a very important issue in treating pain syndromes. There's a big problem in this country, as you probably know, about people taking opiates, drugs like Oxycontin, to treat pain, and many of them get into problems with them. The kind of pain syndromes that we're treating don't get any benefit from opiates. So we're targeting them in an entirely new way. We're treating the sleep problem associated with chronic pain syndromes. And we believe that by treating the sleep problem, the whole syndrome gets better. We're really focused on fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a chronic pain syndrome. It affects mostly women. And it's a situation where many people become addicted to opiates, even though they get no benefits from them. So in terms of our philosophy, we're a patient first company. We're passionately dedicated to trying to help people with fibromyalgia and other pain syndromes. And these people need a lot of help because patients with this problem have been not treated in the best way by, by modern medicine. I think today, just about every physician understands how important the diagnosis of fibromyalgia can be. It's a very interesting controversy. Fortunately, we seem to be on the other side of it. Before Lyrica was approved by the FDA in 2007, many doctors were skeptical about fibromyalgia as a diagnosis. I don't think doctors were skeptical about fibromyalgia it was more a question about what do you call this problem? Some doctors were more comfortable calling it a type of depression. Others, the majority of the people who were experienced, felt that fibromyalgia was a distinct group of patients and that by treating them in specific ways, you really benefited them a lot more than just lumping them in with depressed patients. But fibromyalgia today is recognized by the National Institutes of Health to affect about 5 million Americans. It's a $1.2 billion prescription drug market in the United States. And now there are three approved drugs and the care of fibromyalgia patients has really benefited tremendously with these new approved agents. So I think today the United States has widely recognized fibromyalgia and the challenge for worldwide medicine is for more regulatory authorities like the FDA and other countries to recognize fibromyalgia because so far today only the United States and Canada have approved drugs to treat it. We recently announced the recruitment of Dr. Samuel Sachs to our board of directors and he joins already a strong board but Dr. Sachs has very relevant experience for us and we, we have already started working with him and benefiting from it. Dr. Sachs was the founder and CEO of Jazz Pharmaceuticals and at Jazz Pharmaceuticals he designed and implemented a program to develop a prescription drug for fibromyalgia. That drug was called Rekinla and ultimately it was not approved by the FDA but not because of its efficacy. Rekindla was studied to treat very hard to treat patients, patients that are called refractory to other treatments. And in the studies that Dr. Sachs and his colleagues at Jazz performed, they found that Rekindla was perhaps the most effective drug ever studied. Unfortunately, Rekindla had other issues that made it a problem in becoming a treatment for many patients. So we think that Dr. Sachs will add tremendous value to our company. Before his experiences at Jazz, Dr. Sachs was an executive at the Alza Corporation, and at Alza he played an important role in developing Concerta, 
which is a treatment for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So over a, a significant career in pharmaceuticals, Dr. Sachs has made major improvements in the care of patients with mental health issues. I should also say that Dr. Sachs at Alza worked closely with an existing board member, Dr. Ernest Mario. And Dr. Mario was the CEO of, ja of Alza Pharmaceuticals until it was sold to Johnson & Johnson. So to have those two individuals together as a team on our board is really a terrific benefit to us. I should also mention that Dr. Mario worked with our Chief Operating Officer, Benjamin Selzer, at a previous company called Reliant. And there, together, they got approval for a drug called Lovaza, which is an important treatment for hypertriglyceridemia. But Lovaza is an example of how our team knows how to get drugs approved and knows how to position drugs so that they can be reimbursed by managed care organizations. We also recently announced the recruitment of Leland Gershell to our team as Chief Financial Officer. Dr. Gershell has been on Wall Street for about eight years and worked for a few top investment banks as a sell-side analyst. And we feel that he will be a terrific addition to our team because he can help communicate our message to the investors and to Wall Street banks. Dr. Gershell is an MD, PhD from Columbia and actually had some startup experience working with me a number of years ago, helping to found Vela Pharmaceuticals and Target Pharmaceuticals. So they, together, the new members of the team really build out an existing excellent team, but we feel, above all, our team has done it before. The mission that we've set out to accomplish is realistic. We believe we're going to get our milestones completed on time, and we're going to bring a lot of value to our shareholders. There's a new model in pharmaceutical drug development and marketing. So the contraction of Big Pharma really represents the fact that Big Pharma is slowing down and in many cases stopping their internal drug development programs. And more and more, they rely on us, companies like us, independent producers of prescription drug programs that they can then complete in terms of development and, and become the marketing and distribution arms. So it's true that pharma is shedding many jobs and closing down research facilities, but that's really because they're counting on us to develop the important drugs of the future for them. So it's, it's more likely than not that we will partner our drug with a big pharmaceutical company, and that way we can use their marketing muscle to take what we've developed from a scientific and clinical uh, point of view out to the broadest number of patients who can benefit from the treatment.